All right. Well, new year, new sermon series. We're excited to start one. Uh, Pastor Jeff and I uh, went over some things and God really laid on his heart that we all have questions, right? As you walk through this faith walk and you read the Bible, questions inevitably pop up. And so we have a sermon series for 12 weeks entitled, I Have a Question. (laughs) And this week's question is, why don't I hear from God? Why don't I hear from God? I hear that a lot. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 19 today. And um, if you've downloaded the Bible app, the Notes should be downloaded there. You can also, you know, turn if you're in your Bible or your apps to Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 19. So, why don't I hear from God? It's a common question, and it's a good question. And Scripture gives us a lot of insight on that. So, if you would, we'll start in Hebrews chapter 3 at verse 7. And it says, so, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Okay, well, we'll stop there for a second. Why don't I hear from God? Why? Well, the first thing I want to establish as fact, right from the get-go, if you take nothing else out of today other than this, remember this. The Bible is called the Word of God for a reason, because it is the Word of God. When you read the Bible, you are reading God speaking, period, the end. There is no debate. This is not a fantasy book. This is not some cute stories. This is a historical account of God's chosen people. This is Holy Spirit talking to each and every one of you. So, and you want proof? Let's look at what we just read. Look at the very first three to four words. I believe the author of Hebrews is the Apostle Paul, personally. That's up for great debate. Nobody really knows. But man, when I read it, it sounds like Paul. That doesn't matter. Paul or whoever wrote it reminded us, he said, so as the Holy Spirit says, stop there. Because what you're about to hear is directly from the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Clear to the end. You know where that's from? That's from Psalm 95. The word of God. So you're getting, you're getting like double proof that this is the word of God. The writer, I believe it's Paul, was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write these words. Paul acknowledges that the Holy Spirit wrote Psalms. The very word of God. And it's ironic that the writer writes it this way to prove it, that it is the word of God. When you read the Bible, you are hearing directly from God. So if you're struggling with hearing from he- hearing with God from God, read your Bible every day. Every day. Don't miss a day. It's too important. Don't miss a day. And don't merely read it but do what it says. So it gets better. He goes on and says, God's voice says, today, if you hear my voice, do not harden your hearts. Well, (laughs) you just heard his voice because you read it. I know this sounds simple. And it is. 
That's the way God works. He does not make things complicated. He really doesn't. You don't have to sit there and really figure out and scratch your head. He makes it very simple. If you hear my voice, don't harden your hearts. You heard his voice. Soften your heart. Soften your heart. I was just standing outside listening to Pastor Jeff live streaming before the service. And he was talking about that Greek word. Uh, it's cardia for the heart. And it's more than just muscle. And it's more than just an organ. It's like who you are at your very essence. Don't harden yourself, your heart, your spirit, your mind, all of that. Don't harden it. You see, we make that choice to harden it, to harden our hearts. We like to blame it on other things, but we choose to do it. When I was a young man, I loved everybody and I thought everybody loved everybody. And man, when I found out that wasn't true, that blew me away like it really did. And I really had to harden myself to deal with my paradigm being blown apart. And then I had to go through a process of softening because hardening doesn't work. It makes you numb. It steals your life. Don't harden your heart. What's that mean? Compassion for God and others is a good place to start. You know, when I got really hardened back in my 20s and 30s, I didn't care anything about anybody else. Satan just, he uses that. When you choose to get harder, he's just going to keep piling it on to make you even harder and harder. We've got to be open to receive what God's saying. You've got to be open. And sometimes you have to pull back some layers to be open to do that. So he mentions here in this verse the, 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 the rebellion in the wilderness. What's he talking about? What's the rebellion in the wilderness? If you're new to Christianity, you might be like, what's going on here? So Paul is referring to... Uh, a time probably about 1,400 years prior to this <laughs> where uh, the Israelites were held captive in Egypt for 400 years and, uh, and Moses let them out. So, uh, but <sighs> this is in Exodus. And when Moses led them out, okay, we all are familiar with the Red Sea, right? The parting of the Red Sea. What a miracle. Like, they witnessed that. All, whatever, six million are the estimates that came out of Egypt, witnessed that. With their own eyes, they saw the Red Sea part. Do you think if you saw something like that, you'd ever forget that? I don't think you could possibly forget that. I don't think they forgot it either. I really don't. I think their hearts got hard. <laughs> I think that's why God mentioned that. So, so he leads them out and they go through the Red Sea. And then, you know, they're wandering around because they're just griping. Oh, we had it better off in Egypt. We got no food. Blah, 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 blah. Just really, really in the midst of God performing miraculous things in front of them. Their concern was for themselves. Self, self, self. So the rebellion in the wilderness, they marched around for 40 years because they kept rebelling. Um, for instance, at, uh, uh, there came a time when Moses and God wanted to send a representative from each tribe into the promised land to scout it out. Let's go scout this place out. So there's 12 tribes. So 12 representatives went in and they came back to give a report. And 10 of them were shaking in their boots. Oh my gosh, you should see this place. The people were giants and we're just, we're going to die. Like God lied to us basically is what they're saying. God lied. You know, he might have brought us out of Egypt, might have brought us here, might have said this is a promised land, but there's no way, uh-uh. There's no way we can do that. You know what? They're right. There is no way they could do it on their own. They didn't realize they should have. They served a great God. Two men gave a wonderful report. 
Joshua and Caleb. Wonderful report. Did I get that right? Why is my brain saying? Yeah, Joshua and Caleb gave a wonderful report. This place is ripe. It's got fruit and, and milk and honey. Just it is awesome. We got to go. Well, 10 outweighs two. They rebelled. God got mad. Moses got mad at them because they needed water. And Moses like, do I got to do everything for you? And he hits the rock. And God's like, listen, it was me that did it. So they just really, <laughs> the Israelites kind of just failed the test, man. They really did. They failed the test. So that was the rebellion. Oh, like Moses goes up on the mountain and comes down and they, put a, they build a cold, golden calf. His brother helps them all do it. And Moses is like, what's up? And it, I don't know. This calf just jumped out of the fire. Like, we go to no, we, don't, we spare no links, don't we, to just cover up our sin and try to justify it. It's just amazing. So, <laughs> why don't we hear from God? Well, why do we constantly forget and resist and prioritize other things over God and complain? What are we allowing to distract us? The Israelites' distraction was obvious. They're in the middle of a desert walking around. It's hot. Even though, you know, they got a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire. They just did not trust God enough to believe what he said would happen. That's plain and simple. They didn't trust God enough. And God said, they shall never enter my rest. The rest he was talking about was the promised land. Only two of the original entered, Joshua and Caleb. Only two of the original six million that came out of Egypt entered. Why them? Why those two? Because they had faith. Because they had faith. We're in Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. It's called the Hall of Faith. It's all about great men and women of faith. And it talks about at the very beginning, what is faith? You may hear that word, faith. Well, what is faith? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Caleb and Joshua hoped for that promised land that God promised. They hoped for it. Right? And they were sure of what they hoped for. They weren't there yet. They went to see it, but they weren't, they didn't occupy it yet. But they were certain of it because God said so. Because God said so. That's faith. That's faith in a nutshell. Against all odds, if God says it, it's true, and I believe it, and I'm going to step out on that, no matter what it looks like to my human eyes. Because if God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Verse 12. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. <laughs> Those two verses, if we could live that out, just live that out daily, you would see your life and the lives around, of those around you change incredibly. See to it, none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart. Heart check time, okay? You ready? Let's do a heart check. Why don't I hear from God? Has your heart been fully surrendered to God? You know the answer. Has your heart been fully surrendered to God? Not somewhat, not just on Sundays, not just when I'm in trouble, but all the time, has your heart been fully surrendered to God? Do your actions match your beliefs? I believe in God. 
Even the demons believe and they shudder. The word says that. Do your actions match your beliefs? Encourage one another daily. <laughs> that right there is a message. That right there, and again, if you take one thing from today, whether it's the Bible being the word of God, this is a big one. Encourage one another daily. Encourage one another daily. How awesome is it when somebody you care about or even somebody you don't care about walks up to you and says, you know what? That thing you said the other day, that was awesome. Or, yeah, I just love that shirt you're wearing today or those glasses. Or, you know what? You look a little down. Is there something I can encourage you with? How good does that feel? Encourage one another daily. Are we doing that? Because I'm going to throw a concept out at you here. You know, the Bible says to desire all the spiritual gifts and prophecy is a major gift. And I see a lot of people abusing that word prophecy today. You know, prophecy in 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. The one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. What does um, Hebrews chapter 3 Verse 13 say, encourage one another daily, as long as it's called the day. Encouraging one another daily is prophecy. Prophets speak directly from God. So, in essence, when you are seeking God with all your heart and walking in step with the Holy Spirit and God lays somebody on your heart to say something encouraging to them that's bathed in scripture that everything that is good and right and noble and pure and holy and righteous, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, and you speak that into their lives, they're hearing from God. You're not God, I'm not God, but we may be the only Jesus somebody ever sees. We are his ambassadors. We are official representatives of God and of Jesus Christ and of his kingdom. Why do you think he says encourage one another daily? It's so important. How hard is this world to walk through? Especially now with COVID thrown at everything. We all need a little encouragement, right? When we give Christian encouragement, bathed in scripture, God speaks through us to others so that the entire body may build up to the point where they all reach maturity in the unity of Christ. That's the goal. What are we doing to get to that goal every day? Why don't I hear from God? Why don't I hear from God? Well... I think sometimes we, th that needs a, oh, I better watch my words. That needs a translator. <laughs> that needs a translator. Because I think sometimes that question is, why isn't God blessing me? Hearing from God and being blessed are two different things. Okay? So don't mix the two up. Don't mix the two up. Hearing from God is not always about you. <laughs> Now, when you're new and new in Christ and you're discovering his ways, he really is going to, he's, he's going to pour love on you. And it is about you. It always is in a way. But listen, <laughs> God's kingdom is community. Don't just be concerned with hearing, but also with sharing his word. Don't be selfish. We sung this little song, and I thought of that when I was writing this message today. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm going to let it shine. Are you, are you shining his light? You see, when, when, why don't I hear from God? It's not this, 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 here, here. It is here, here, but then it goes out, and it comes back. That's ministry. So, we got to be careful that our question really isn't, why am I not hearing from God? Sometimes I think it's, why isn't God blessing me more? Why, why aren't I seeing more? Me, 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 I, I, I. It's not always about us. 
He mentions sin's deceitfulness in the passage. Sin's deceitfulness. Sin comes wrapped as everything you always wanted. It is deceitful. Satan is the father of lies. So it is deceitful. You've got to be on guard. Sometimes when something looks really, really good, you better make sure it is in God's plan for you. And then to to hold that firm conviction to the end. What do you do when something big comes in your path and makes you doubt? A major sickness, a major illness, a major pandemic. What do you do? Do you throw in the towel? Do you go wandering like some church people are doing? Oh, I'm not coming to church because of the COVID. You know what? Some of that is true. If you are a certain age, if you're immunocompromised, please. But you know if you're using that as an excuse. You know. Hold on to that firm conviction to the very end. To the very end. You can't doubt. James says about doubting, he who doubts is like a wave tossed by the sea. Like you got to be sure to know that you know that you know. Let's finish up. Verse 15. As has just been said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. rebellion. That's Psalm 95, 7 and 8. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Interesting how God ties all that together. Especially that last word. I don't think we really realize the ramifications of sin and how God views our sin, even though we are forgiven. So here we are, Israel, God's chosen people, captive 400 years in Egypt. We talked about that, led out by Moses through the power of God's awesome signs and wonders that they all saw. They knew better. They knew better. They knew better. Or at least they should have, right? Because they heard and they saw God's power, yet they were unbelieving as evidenced by their rebellion. You see, I think we like to separate rebellion and unbelief. I feel like we like to walk that edge. You know what? I can be sinful and rebellious in my little pet, but I still believe. God does not play that. He doesn't. He doesn't play that. You can say you believe all you want, but when your behavior is rebellious and sinful at the same time, it's counted as unbelief by God. Wow. John chapter 6 verse 44 says, no one... This is Jesus talking. He says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. And I will raise them up at the last day. If you're a Christian, the Father drew you. He had to. There's no other way. Which means you heard from God at least once in your life. That's hearing from God, being drawn Even though you don't perceive that as hearing, that drawing is him talking to you and you responding to that is you responding to his voice. So you heard once, you're here today seeking and curious. So you're hearing. So you need to change your paradigm about what hearing from God means and what that means for you and others who surround you. God longs for you to enter into his promised abundant life. Why don't I hear from God? He is speaking constantly, all the time. When Ed or Paul rings the bell, 
I like to go outside and pray. And I look up to the hills. I turn my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? <laughs> and I looked up today and I saw the trees and shrouded in fog and the river. And it was just, that's God speaking. He's speaking all the time through his word, through his creation, through everyday experiences. And it is up to us to be fully tuned in. Not just fully tuned in, but that's it. Tuning out everything else. I have friends who are big football fans, you know, and they got, their, they got three TVs set up. How can you do that? I think we do that with our life, with God. We got too many screens set up. We need one screen <laughs> that's God that we pay attention to. And then everything else filters out of that. I'm going to close with this thought. Why don't I hear from God? The old saying, there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? There's a difference between hearing and listening. Yeah, I hear you, honey. Where is Sherry? <laughs> I hear you. Hey, did you do that thing? No. Well, I told you. Well, you said you heard me. Yeah, I heard you. Did I listen? There's a difference between hearing and listening. Maybe the question shouldn't be, why don't I hear from God? And instead be, why don't I listen to God? Let's pray. God, I, I thank you that you always are speaking. I thank you for your word. It is so precious. We have no idea how good we got it because some people in other countries would give their lives to have something that lays on the table and gathers dust in our homes. It's your word. It's powerful. It's living and active. Help us to see it as that, to live it, to read it, to do what it says, to devour it, to eat it like bread. When we walk in step with you, when we're close to you, when we tune out other things, your voice becomes louder and louder and louder. Help us to hear Help us to do, help us to shine your light to this dark world. In Jesus' name, amen.